I spent 100 days in RPG Minecraft, a mod pack that lets you level up your character's stats, customize your character with a giant skill tree, and add six custom classes, each one with a bunch of abilities and magic spells that you can unlock through leveling up. And my goal is to progress through the custom quest line and survive 100 days by building a cool base, exploring the custom structures and dimensions to level up, unlock abilities, and get overpowered gear to beat the toughest enemies and bosses like the Rotwalker, Forgotten Guardian, and the Invoker. Welcome to day one of RPG Minecraft. To start off my adventure, I spawned in a village and read through the tutorial, which rewarded me with a few starter items like a backpack for extra storage, a wallet to hold my coins, which is actually what you use to trade with villagers. Oh, you're unemployed. Which is actually what you use to trade with villagers. And my first weapon, a staff, which for now basically just acts the same as a sword, but will be used to cast spells once I learn them. So I gathered some wood for wooden tools and got stone from a nearby cave. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's already a bunch of mobs down there. But when I attempted to take out a skeleton, I didn't meet the requirements for using my staff, which means it'll deal much less damage than normal. In RPG Minecraft, each weapon has a stat requirement to use it, and I can increase my stats by putting points into them that I get from leveling up, which I can do by completing quests, slaying mobs and bosses, and simple things like mining or farming. Increasing my strength stat does things like increasing my damage and health regen, intelligence increases my magic damage and magic regen, and dexterity increases my attack speed and projectile damage. So I put the three points I got from the tutorial into intelligence, and now I can actually use my staff. And as you can see, this has custom combat. We're not swinging like normal. And this combat makes the game much harder. Oh, I'm at 13 health. As I step back to heal, a custom creeper with a launching ability. What? And zombies kept chasing me. And even these few mobs were too much to handle at my low level. <gasps> oh my gosh, I just got down to one health. The mobs did drop a few pieces of equipment though, including these reinforced plate boots of the storm, which increase my health and my armor, plus give me additional defense and resistance to lightning. But they require least strength one. So since I'm level four, I was able to increase my strength and equip the boots. All right. And it's already turning nighttime on our first day. <gasps> okay. I am gonna sleep in one of these villagers houses. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. And since I'm here, I looted all of the chests in the village for even more gear and items like this support gem, which slightly improves your abilities. But since I don't have any yet, it was time to pick my class. There are six total classes. There's the ranger class, which gives archery abilities like auto crafting arrows, shooting meteor arrows, and placing traps. There's the bard class that can play music to heal your allies, give yourself massive buffs, or damage enemies. The shaman class class summons totems to heal players, summons lightning, and spawns meteors. The warrior class focuses on melee fighting with abilities to increase your attack and movement speed and a whirlwind spin attack. The wizard class has fire and ice spells like shooting a simple fireball or summoning a huge ice comet from the sky. And finally, the class I chose, the summoner, which at level one lets me summon a zombie minion to help me in combat and gets me the poison blast ability, which shoots out a ball of poison to damage enemies. And as I level up, I'll be able to unlock more spells like summoning skeletons, creating a cloud of poison, and even creating a massive black hole. To me, this class seems by far the most overpowered. And when trying to test out my abilities on a creeper, I found out that the poison projectiles are homing and they automatically targeted this nearby iron golem. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not mean to attack the iron golem. Then I noticed a nearby house in the woods and decided to check it out. It looks like it used to be like a witch's hut or something. It turns out an illusioner still lived here. So my zombies and I I dealt with him out back, if you know what I'm saying. And then after cleaning up the place and looting a few more barrels, I found a miserable sun staff, which was only a common rarity, but was a slight increase in damage and mana gained per hit from my current staff. But my intelligence level wasn't high enough to use it, so I'd have to come back for it. But for now, I decided to store my items here and have this place be my temporary home because right nearby was another custom structure. I headed inside these overgrown ruins and found a golden flower called the Totem of Regrowth, which makes nearby crops grow much faster, which would come in handy once I set up a farm. The structure also had an evoker trap, which I disarmed and then looted the rest of the chest before coming home. What I didn't know at the time though was the first quest in this mod pack was simply to slay five zombies and five skeletons, which I did on my way home and completing that quest rewarded me with XP and a zombie gateway pearl. This essentially starts a raid, but with zombies. So I took on all five waves of the raid with my summons helping me and my poison
Poison Blast spell. And after they were all done, the gateway portal closed and dropped a ton of useful loot. I can't even hold it all. But with so much extra gear now, I had to craft a salvaging table, which lets you break down gear into stones that you can use to repair gear or use them to craft new gear later on. But now I've officially unlocked the skill tree. There are literally hundreds of options here. So I started off with the staff perk, which boosts all of my stats, but mostly my intelligence. And I branched my way to the minion frenzy perk, which boosts my summons damage, but lowers their health. As a quest reward for beating the zombie gateway though, I was given a witch gateway, which was perfect because in this world, there have been rumors of extremely large zombies, skeletons, and creepers roaming around, and witches brewing a new type of potion is suspected to be to blame. And killing three witches would complete my next quest and get me more information. So I placed the witch gateway, hopefully I don't die and regret this, summoned my zombies, attack, 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 and luckily my summons were able to tank most of the damage while I stayed back and spammed my poison blast. Okay. And that was it. The gateway dropped a bunch of loot, but more importantly, fighting all of those witches revealed the rumors of the large monsters were true. And those monsters were being created by a new mysterious potion called Chemical X. And from killing those witches, I was able to collect four of those potions. So I decided I wanted to figure out for myself exactly what Chemical X does. So I headed down into the caves to try to find a good mob to use as a test subject. Well, this seems like a place I shouldn't go, but that I will. While I was in the cave though, I was mining for a few ores and I ran into a goblin trader. Most of his trades are pretty useless except for this one that let me turn two raw gold into three ingots. So I traded all that I had with him. And that's all I can do. So thank you for your service. Ooh, watch out for this guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Good thing I'm strong, but also diamonds and more diamonds. And now that I'm surrounded by mobs and in a big open area, I figured now was the perfect time to test out the chemical X potion on this skeleton. And when I did, it turned into, oh my gosh, a mutant skeleton, which wields a crossbow and is strong enough to... Whoa, it just flung my summon. But taking it out leveled me up to level 10 and it dropped a trident, which is pretty cool. But I can't use spells if you're using a trident. So I just stuck with my staff. But I also got three orbs of infinity, which you can use on a weapon to level it up and increase its stats, bringing my staff from seven attack damage to 10. I went back to my temporary home and unloaded all of my loot into storage and decided I wanted to upgrade my armor. I do kind of want a better chest plate to see if we can get something better than 16 magic shield and 3% mana. So using some spiritual ore, four uncommon stones, a lesser crystal, iron ingot, and five copper coins, I was able to craft an uncommon armor soul, which I fused into an iron chest plate, creating a glimmering cloth chest of the philosopher, which has much better stats than my current chest plate. At this point, I was ready to find a new place to live and abandon our stolen illusioner's home. So I packed up everything I owned into a few backpacks and headed out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what is that, a rhino? Eventually, I made my way down into the caves where I started gathering more resources, but what I didn't realize at the time was that this cave was home to a bunch of mobs, including a mutant zombie. Uh oh, he's already coming for me. The mutant zombie was taking a ton of hits, showing how underpowered I really was at this point. Oh, he's going feral! My summons were doing most of the damage while I tried to defend myself from all the other mobs attacking me, but the mutant zombie has a leap ability, which let him close the distance and keep pressure on me. But my summons finally took it out, or so I thought. <gasps> but he's back! The mutant zombie's other ability is to revive itself up to three times unless I burn its body. Help! Summons help! But since I don't have flint and steel or lava... Oh my gosh, is he not actually down? Oh my gosh! But eventually, with the help of my summons, we were able to take it out once and for all. Oh, okay, now he's gone. Oh my gosh, what did I kill him, like 10 times? I stuck around in the caves to hunt down eight glow skeleton for a side quest that would reward me with five gold coins. But before I could even finish that, I had a much bigger problem to worry about. What is that? <gasps> What? A giant stone golem had spawned with a powerful laser eye. What is this? Why is there a laser? My summons were dealing most of the damage while I did everything I could to hide myself from its laser. Oh my gosh, it's on so much health still. The other mobs in the cave were still attacking me too, and my helmet broke, so I had to use some common stones to repair it. But finally, I defeated the stone golem, and it dropped a bunch of loot, which made this fight feel well worth it. And after my summons protected me from another mutant skeleton, I unlocked 
Spell Lifesteal and leveled up my zombie summons. And in this mod pack, you can be two different classes at once. So in addition to being the summoner class, I chose the subclass of Wizard, which let me unlock a chance to freeze enemies when I attack them and increased my mana regen. But for now, I was more than ready to leave the caves because after fighting so many mutant monsters, I was confident that the witches were brewing the chemical X potions, but I had a suspicion that the illagers were the ones behind wanting these potions brewed in the first place. So I needed to track some illagers down. So after looting this village I found, I saw some smokestacks off in the distance, which led me straight to a pillager camp. And these big brain pillagers thought it was a good idea for their camp to just be a hole in the ground. So I was able to shoot my poison blast down to them, which was nice, but there weren't enough pillagers here for me to get all the info that I need. So I looted their chests, and as I was doing that, I discovered a secret underground basement, which had more witches and vindicators waiting for me. Once I took them out, I was able to loot even more chests and found bookshelves, which I used for enchanting my tools and armor, but not my staff. Since these custom weapons require custom enchants that we'll get into later. The pillagers in that base still weren't enough to get the info I needed, so I went out to find a pillager outpost. But on the way, I ran into another mutant monster. Oh my god! A giant mutant creeper! I made sure to keep my distance and let my summons do the damage, but after it died, it started sucking me, pulling me closer, and then exploded. No, that was a lot of good items, I like, I'm guessing. A better staff than mine was dropped, plus a creeper egg, which just exploded and dropped gunpowder. So then I made my way the rest of the way to a pillager tower. And once I found one, I was able to take out the rest of the pillagers to gather the information I needed. And what I learned was somewhere off in a deep, dark forest was a hidden woodland mansion. And this mansion didn't just have normal pillagers. It also had bashers, archivists, and a custom boss, the invoker. I knew taking this on would be quite the challenge. So to prepare, I wanted to finally make a real base, so I had a place to store all my items and just a place to live in general. Plus, I could work on custom enchanting to make sure I would be strong enough to stand a chance against the invoker. So I explored around the world until I found this cool mountain surrounded by a river with other mountains and decided to build my base up top. So I placed down a chest and got to building. All right, here's my tiny little house. This took me two full days. I don't know. I'm not a good builder. I don't know. I think it looks okay. <laughs> and now that the base is done and all my items are a lot more organized, I can truly prepare for the invoker boss. The invoker always spawns at level 15. And since I'm only level 12, I had some work to do. I went down into the caves to grind mobs for XP, which was leveling me up pretty quickly. But that's when I ran into another stone golem. Oh God, not again. Only this time I had leveled up and got in much better gear that this giant golem that nearly killed me before I was able to easily beat in just a few seconds. And that is what gave me the confidence to go and try to fight the invoker, even though I was still under leveled and not enchanted. So I needed to find the woodland mansion and I could do that by crafting an explorer's compass. I set its tracker to find the mansion and followed its direction for over 5,000 blocks until I finally found what I was looking for. Well, I thought... I did. Even though this is identical to a dark oak mansion, besides the wood, apparently this is different. I spent multiple days here looting and looking for the invoker boss, but it couldn't even spawn here in this acacia woodland mansion. And the whole time, my explorer compass was still pointing to the real woodland mansion that was only a few hundred blocks away. And as I approached it, the invoker boss bar already showed up. So I knew this time I was in the right place. So I summoned my zombies and broke open the walls to start a fight. My poison blasts were immediately doing very little damage. So I was already worrying about fighting the invoker. And before I could even get inside, vexes were flying through the walls attacking me. But I was able to break my way in through the window and keep attacking as the illagers came, which got kind of scary. Ah! But I toughened up, making my way through each room until I finally found the invoker in a random hallway. <laughs> already missing some health from my summons attacking it, the invoker summoned much stronger versions of vexes, which I was luckily able to handle since my poison blast projectiles are homing. But the invoker's other ability was a bit scarier to face. Whoa! But since the invoker was targeting me, my summons were able to chip away at its health and we finally beat it. <gasps> we got it. We got primal essence and an epic spear, which I'm not even gonna be able to use. I can't use spears. <laughs> I also got a 
crown and talent points to spend, so I used them to increase my cooldown reduction and cast speed, and slightly increased my intelligence. Yeah, that just gets us more mana regen, which I guess is good too. And now that I'm level 15 and have taken out the overworld threat responsible for the chemical X potions, it was time to check out the threats that await me in the nether. I knew this wasn't going to be an easy task because this version of the nether is much more dangerous than vanilla Minecraft. It's full of custom structures, mobs, and even more bosses. I found a horse while traveling home, and once I arrived, I finally salvaged all my extra gear I had and put some more support gems on my spells. I also took this chance to enchant my armor. Whoa, fire protection and regular protection? And the rest of my armor got pretty good enchants too. Nice. To finish off my upgrades before going to the nether, I crafted a brand new staff and crafted an epic weapon soul to use on the staff, which gives it the stats of an epic weapon. And it's not as good. Wait, what? <laughs> the new staff dealt less damage than the one I was already using, even though it's a better rarity. But the new staff could be upgraded more than the old one, so I swapped it out as my main weapon anyway. And I made this little farm here, so we finally have a renewable source of food. And this thing here in the middle, Totem of Growth, makes crops grow faster. So you can see this grew to 71% as soon as I placed the seeds. As soon as morning came around though, I built the nether portal and was ready to take on the next dimension of challenges. And right as I got inside, I sneezed. <laughs> So I think I'm allergic to the nether, but I had a good reason to stay. Is that a fire squid? The first quest we have to do in the nether is to take out eight piglins and four hoglins. So I figured a bastion would be the best place to find these mobs. But as I was looking for one, I ran across this custom nether castle. And before I explored it, I figured now was a good time to learn a new spell. Because I don't want homing spells right now. Because if I accidentally hit a piglin, it's over for me. So I decided to learn the spell Thornbush, which creates a circle of thorns on the ground, constantly damaging and knocking back any enemy that steps inside. Now, I was ready to enter the nether castle structure, but as soon as I did, I was met by two giddy blazes, not to be confused with the gritty, which I was able to test my new spell against, and it took them out pretty quickly. Okay, this actually isn't bad. I'm kind of scared to use it though, because what if a piglin walks in? I decided to spend another skill point to unlock another new spell, Ice Shard, which throws out a shard of ice damaging enemies and having a chance to freeze them. This way, I'd have at least one spell I can aim and shoot so I won't accidentally hit any zombified piglins. So I went back up to take out even more of the giddy blazes, but then... What? What the... Hello? I was eaten by some sort of bug? Disgusting? What's going on? I beat it to death until it let me go. Then I realized there's blocks spitting out spores, and those spores are what are trying to eat me. So I broke the spore block and kept exploring. Other than more custom blazes and this piglin that fell victim to the spores, I looted chests which had a ton of diamonds and gold, which was awesome because I never really had to go mining again. But I still needed to kill some piglins and hoglins for the quest, so I made my way over to a bastion that I saw in the distance. The brutes made the this place kind of scary, but I was able to keep my distance and use my spells to take out the eight piglins I needed for the quest, but this bastion didn't have any hoglins, so I looted the chest and made my way to find another bastion and was able to take out the four hoglins there, which completed the quest and leveled me up to level 18. So we're close to being able to get some pretty crazy stuff. I don't want to spoil what it is, but this level 25 ability right here is what I'm really excited for. And now that the Piglin and Hoglin quest is complete, not too far away, I spotted a custom nether fortress, which was perfect because there's one more thing I need from the nether. If I can gather three wither skeleton skulls, oh, we got a skull. I could summon the wither and get a nether star to craft a catalyst, which is an item you use to light a custom portal to enter a brand new dimension. And all I had to do to get the wither skulls was avoid the dragons. Ooh. What is that? As I was fighting for my life to get the wither skulls, I almost pressed this random button before I realized it was connected to a piece of TNT. So apparently this fortress is trapped too. So I guess I got to watch out for that. After fighting more skeletons, I had two wither skulls and enough skull fragments to craft a third. But there was still one problem. The wither is a level 30 boss and I'm only level 18. So I had some grinding to do. Oh, it's good to be back. Besides combat, which is how I've been leveling up, there's nine other skills we can use to gain XP. So I decided to grind fishing, which was seeming to get me XP pretty quickly. And it completed a bunch of side quests for even more XP. And I was even fishing up some good enchanted books and a loot chest. Inside was five rare items, none of them better than gear I had though. So I salvaged all of them into five rare stones, which seems worth it, but it cost me eight rare stones to craft the key to open the crate. So overall it was trash. But still, I upgraded my bridge and then got back to fishing, which I ended up doing for many, many days. First 
first upgrading my fishing rod to a diamond fishing rod with a gold hook, which let me catch treasure more often, like this Neptune's Bounty Chest, which had four of an incredibly rare ingot inside, Neptunium. Neptunium can be used to craft any tool or armor, but it's also used to craft the best fishing rod in the entire game. I didn't have enough levels to enchant it, so for now, I kept using my diamond fishing rod to fish faster and get XP, but then I ended up fishing up another Neptune chest. Are you serious? I fished for many hours more and I caught a lot of loot chests, which got me a lot of items. Whoa. Oh my gosh. <laughs> which I just ended up salvaging. But with all these crafting materials I'm getting from salvaging, I decided it was finally time to craft custom enchants. Scrolls with different rarities that you have to apply to your gear in order, which greatly increased the damage of my staff. Then I built a cute little path next to my house because I needed a break from fishing. But after enchanting to get officially the best Neptune rod in the game, I went back to fishing and leveled up all the way to level 20. I think this is as geared as I'm going to get. And mostly I'm just tired of grinding now. I want to go fight the wither. But here's the thing. There's so many ways I could make the fight easier by like just doing it underground or doing it in the nether roof. But I feel like that's lame. I should do it out in the open like normal. So I decided to do the wither fight above ground, which was only going to make this harder. And even after all that grinding, I was still 10 levels below the wither. This this was gonna be tough. So before I spawned the wither, I brewed some custom potions that boosted my crit damage, strength, and magic damage to try to have a chance. So I placed down the three skulls to spawn the wither, wish me luck, and began fighting. My magic shield was tanking most of the damage at first, protecting me from getting withered, but once that ran out, the wither was doing half my health in a single shot. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got the wither down to half health, but wasn't able to tank the damage alone. There's no hardcore mode for RPG Minecraft, but when you die, it lowers your favor, which means all loot chests I get in the future will give me worse items now. The only way to raise my favor again is to stay alive longer. So even though this isn't hardcore, avoiding death is still extremely important. I made my way back to the wither and brought my summons with me this time. I don't know why I didn't do that last time. And I was able to run circles around the wither, avoiding its attacks while my summons dealt most of the damage. Come on. Let's go, finally. I leveled up from this fight and expanded my skill tree to increase my summon damage and unlock the new spell, Poison Cloud, which creates an area around me of poison dealing damage to the enemies inside. But now that I had the Wither Star, I can craft the Catalyst and light this custom portal to open a brand new dimension. Whoa, what is this place? This is the Undergarden, full of horrifying monsters. What is that? And that! and an overall horrifying vibe with even more horrifying fish. Dude, this place is freaky. I needed to investigate the mobs in this dimension to see what I could learn from this place, but my spells were doing very little damage. These mobs were a lot stronger than I expected, especially the Rotlings, which have less health, but are insanely fast and deal massive damage. Just a couple of hits from these guys and it's over for me. And the giant rot beast is the tankiest of them all. Ending up with my back against the wall fighting one of these guys and it'd be almost impossible for me to come out alive. But but fighting these monsters wasn't all for nothing. I learned that somewhere in this dimension was a custom structure called the Catacombs, which is a giant maze full of spawners that spawn even scarier mobs and a mysterious guardian is defending the place. Inside has a ton of loot though, so I have to find it. If I'm gonna do that though, I need to level up more and get stronger so I at least have a chance to live. So to level up, I'm gonna get XP from doing nether side quests that I skipped doing earlier, like fighting the mother lava squid, which really is just like a normal lava squid, but bigger. And the next side quest, fighting the wildfire mini boss, which also went down pretty quickly since I was seven levels above it. But doing that brought me up to level 25, which finally let me unlock the spell I've been the most excited to use, Minion Explode. This spell makes my summoned minions instantly explode for up to 7.5 times my weapon damage, plus extra damage depending on the minion's health. I think this is gonna be insanely overpowered. Nether mobs though have a huge resistance to fire and explosion damage. So here isn't the place to test it out. The under garden is where this is going to be really useful. So I finished the rest of the side quest in the nether. And before going back into the over garden dimension, I decided to expand the base since it was getting pretty cramped in here with all of our stuff. And this is the house, the big reveal. 
Okay, hear me out. Obviously, it's not done yet. Hopefully, you can get the vision. But we are getting real close to day 100. And I don't want to end the 100 day challenge by building. I want to go back to the new dimension we found. So that's exactly what I did. And I even upgraded my stats and spells with the levels I had gotten. And through the skill tree, I unlocked the ability to have four summons instead of only three, which could make the minion explode spell even more powerful. So I decided to test it out. And with just one summon, it almost one shot the rot walkers and did a massive chunk of damage on the rot beast. If I had all four summons out, it would be over for these guys. Let's go. Now I was ready to find the custom catacomb structure. So I brought back out my explorer's compass and set it to track the catacombs and quickly made my way there. Well, it would have been quick if I didn't get stuck in this gross slugs goo. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Skintling goo. They dropped the goo balls. I kept following the directions of the explorer's compass and I finally found what I was looking for. Okay, it looks like this is it. These are the catacombs. So I broke down the iron bars and blocked myself inside. Okay, we're safe in here. <gasps> Never mind. So that was a bad sign for how the rest of this is gonna go. But I made my way back and now was a lot more cautious now that I know what to expect. So now I was ready to go down into the maze that is the catacombs. And I was immediately met by two spawners and two more spawners in almost every single room. <gasps> what are you, a nargoyle? The chest here had some pretty decent loot, like food, unique weapons, and even custom materials only found in this dimension that are used to create some gear with some pretty cool abilities. The rarest material to find here though is the Forgotten Metal, which is basically this dimension's version of Netherite. Before I could find any though, I ran into the defender of the catacombs, the Forgotten Guardian. Oh my god! It was trapped by water, but the Guardian can break blocks, so it was only a matter of time before this thing gets free and one shots me. So I had to act fast. All right, we gotta blow it up. Go guys, go, go, go. Come on, get closer. My strongest attack only did a third of its health. So before it broke free, I spammed every spell I had on it and was able to finally take it down. Let's go. And it dropped 12 forgotten nuggets, enough to make an entire ingot. So fighting that was a big risk, but I got very lucky and it was worth taking it out. After continuing my way through the catacombs, breaking spawners and collecting every chest as I went, even finding a smithing template for the forgotten tool upgrade so I could actually use my forgotten ingot. That was the undergarden dimension and 100 days in RPG minecraft complete i didn't even have time to see how different the dragon and the end dimension are so if you want to see more stuff like this subscribe and join my discord